eight and y equals point six. Take a few more seconds, we'll start working on this in just a little bit. So multiplying just like as if they were whole numbers, we take care of the decimal places at the end moving from the right hand side. The negative and positive signs, they work just like multiplication rule we, we know and love. Hey, with that in mind, uh, is our product up here going to be positive or negative? Positive. Definitely positive. How about this one, positive or negative? Negative. negative. Good, negative times positive is negative. Hey, how about this one, folks? This one, after you evaluate, is our answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. That's a positive, that's a negative, that's a positive. That's going to be negative. That's for sure going to be negative. We're going to find that out, though. So we'll plug that in and discover that. So on our, on our first example, we've got negative 0.7 times negative 5.8. That's negative times negative, negative times negative is a? Positive. So we know it's going to be positive. Let's just do the multiplication. we got 5.8. times 0 0.7. We'll do that multiplication, then we'll determine the sign. Uh, well, it's already determined. We'll just keep that sign the way we already know it. So 8 times 7 gives you how much? We'll carry the 5. 5 times 7, that's 35 plus 5. Hopefully you got... How many decimal places should I move to? From the left or from the right? Right. Would you raise your hand if you got 4.06? If you didn't raise your hand, you didn't get 4.06? Oh, yeah, no. You did? You did? In the middle? Yes, no? Okay. If you didn't, what happened? Was it somewhere in here? Was it the actual multiplication? Was it the sign? If it's a sign, check out the multiplication rule again. Know that a positive times a positive is a positive. Positive times a negative, no matter which order is a negative. Negative times a negative is always a positive. So have those. Those still work for our decimals. Now, next up, again, we're going to have to multiply. Should our product be negative or positive here? Negative. negative. We're determining that first. You see, we have a negative times a positive. We know that's going to be a negative. Let's just do our multiplication. So if we're going through this, we're going to have 63. 9 times 0 is 0, plus 6 is 6. We'll get 36. We'll get 54 plus 3. 5, 7, 6, 6, 3. Did you get it? Yes. Next up. Placeholder. I use an X just to make sure that I don't forget about that thing. 5 times 7 is 35. Carry that 3. 5 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. Then we're going to have a 20. Then we're going to have a 32. And now we need two place value holders. I'll erase these that I already used up. We'll get 63. We'll get a 6. We'll get a 36. And we'll get a 57. Still okay? Mm -hmm. Now we add. I know I got a 3. I know I have 11. I know I've got, oh, how much is that? 13. 13, very good. 
How much is this? 14. Then I'm going to get... So 6144313, raise your hand if you got that far. Very good. Only thing we got to do now is figure out the sign and the number of decimal places I need to move. The sign of this number is going to be positive or negative. Negative. So don't forget about the negative. How many decimal places are we going to move? Six. That's one, two, three, four, five, six places from the right hand side. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh. Our answer is negative six point one four four three one. What place value is this for right there? Good. Someone else, what place value is this one? Hundred thousandths. How about this one? Where's the ones? There is no ones. What's this one? Ones. Ones. Those are ones. Feel okay with it? Okay. Last step, evaluation. Evaluation means, again, plug these things in, then figure out the, the answer. We'll have 25. That's not going to change. But our x is going to be negative 0.8. I'm going to use parentheses to show that I'm multiplying and that that's a negative. And lastly, we're going to have 0.6. I'm also going to put that in parentheses to show that we're multiplying. You okay so far? Now, someone's already done the work. What is 25 times negative 0.8? Um, negative 20.0. So you're saying these two numbers give you negative 20.0? Yeah. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.6. Is our answer going to be positive or negative? What do you think? Negative. negative. Definitely. We have a negative times a positive. In fact, you could have seen that from right here. Two positives, one negative. That negative sign is going to be negative the whole time. What's negative 20.0 times 0.6? Negative 12. How you I multiplied 25 times 0.8. Eight twelve. Multiply them just like you would. So over here, I'll erase this and, and do it in tonight. You do the twenty-five times point eight. Of course, that's going to give you forty. That's sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. That's twenty. You move one decimal place. That's how we're getting the negative twenty point zero. Now, if you continue that twenty point zero times point six, you really don't need that point zero, do you? Point zero doesn't really matter. We'd have zero. We'd get twelve. Again, you're moving one decimal place. That's 12.0. Of course, it's negative because you had a positive times a negative. Oh, yeah, after, do it How did you do it? Does it really matter? No. Multiplication is commutative and associative, right? It means how you multiply doesn't really matter. As long as you multiply all three of these at some point, you're going to be just fine. Okay. Raise your hand feel okay with the multiplication so far. Now, there's one more thing I've got to talk about. I've got to talk about the circumference of a circle. Do you guys remember the perimeter idea? Yeah. Was perimeter the amount of carpet that covers your floor or the amount of siding you need to go around your room? Okay, so it's like if you stepped off the room like that, that's how many feet you would have gone, right? We don't have an idea, well, we don't have the perimeter of a circle because perimeter is defined as being straight edges added together. Are you with me? It's for a polygon. That's a a uh, shape with like straight sides that's closed. The idea of perimeter for a circle, I hope you listen to this, is a circumference. So when I say circumference, what I actually mean is the distance around the circle. So circumference here is the distance around a circle. It's like the perimeter idea for a circle. Distance around a circle. You know what's funny? There's really only one measurement that you have for a circle. Every circle's got a center to it. And every circle, if you think about it, is going to have the same distance from the center to the edge of a circle. That's actually how circles were first created. Some guy had a, had a stick and a line. And he said, if I keep my stick in the sand and a line the same distance away from that stick and I go all the way around, it's going to make a circle a set of points equidistant from some fixed point called a center. That's what a circle is. So this distance from here to here doesn't change all the way around the circle. Do you remember what that's called? Radius. 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 Yeah, it has a little letter R, and R is the radius.
It's from the center to the edge of your circle. From the center to the edge. Now, a long time ago, these guys wanted to find the relationship between the radius and the circumference. So the relationship between the distance from the center to the edge and how far around the circle you would have to go to create a circumference. So how far you have to travel around. And somebody did it. There's this very special number called pi. Have you ever heard of pi as a number? Yeah, pi is not just something to eat. That's fantastic. But it's also a number. Pi is actually this weird number. Looks like that. It's 3.14159, and it never, ever, ever ends. And it never, ever repeats a set pattern of numbers, which means you cannot represent it as a fraction. It goes forever. There's millions and millions and millions of digits of pi. It doesn't end ever. They've proven that. We're going to use pi as approximately 3.14. If you want to use approximately, you need this symbol. It's like a squiggly equals, it means about. All right, so we're going to use about 3.14. Here's the idea for circumference. To find the circumference of a circle, you take 2 times pi times the radius. The number 2 times pi, 3.14, times the radius. So if you have a circle like this, how much is the radius here, folks? Four. 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 Yeah. yeah, the radius is 4. You're right. The radius is 4. You guys see the radius is 4? Yeah. The circumference would then be, let's see if we can do it. Check it out. The 2 doesn't change. What's the pi? 3.14. Pi or 3.14, great. Because that is a number, right? How much is your r? Four. Four. Can you do that math? Yes. 2 times 3.14 times 4. It'd probably be easiest to do 2 times 4 first, get 8, and then multiply the decimal. You with me? Yeah. Probably easiest to do that. Some people actually represent this as 8 pi instead of the, the number, but you can do the number. Do 4 times 2 times 3.14. One last example will be done for today. What if I gave you this? I said the distance from edge to edge through the center is 10 is 10. Would you be able to find the circumference in that case? Yeah, sure. Yeah, wouldn't it be 5? What would, radius. Wouldn't what be 5? The radius would be 5. Perhaps. So if I give you this, this is called a diameter. Half the diameter is a radius. So the radius here would not be 10, but would be 5. You take 2 times 3.14 times 5, and then you figure out your circumference. Raise your hand if you're okay with the circumference ideas. Good job.